This is Health Yeah, your weekly update on what's going on in the health, wellness, and medical world with Monica Robbins. March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Colorectal cancer, or sometimes called colon cancer for short, is a disease that develops from certain growths in the inner lining of your colon. It's one of the top three cancers in men and women across the country. And experts say one of the few preventable cancers. I think I'm gonna beat this and I'm gonna, you know, do what I need to do because that's, you know, I got a little more in my tank. The number of younger people getting this cancer, though, is growing as well, which prompted a drop in the regular screening age from 50 to 45, and even younger if there's a family history. We take you step by step through the screening process. Plus, a recent study highlighted the racial disparities when it comes to colorectal cancer and what can be done to remove those barriers. Everything you need to know about colorectal cancer straight ahead in this week's edition a prescription for life. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Monica Robbins. Colorectal cancer is often called the silent killer because nobody wants to talk about it due to a stigma and embarrassment. And often symptoms don't appear until later stages. Now we're talking about things that people don't normally bring up in conversation like poop, boo-boo, stool, or feces, whatever you want to call it. But it is a serious topic that's killing people and it doesn't have to. Ahead, a TV anchor takes us through her step-by-step -step process of screening for colon cancer. And we dig into the disparities when it comes to African Americans. But first, with better screening and treatments, colorectal cancer among those over 50 is on the decline. But cases are growing among younger people. The American Cancer Society reports one one in every five new cases are people in their early 50s or younger. That's why the push is on to get younger people screened. Here's Cassidy Byer out of South Carolina to explain what could be at play and the signs to watch for. Colon cancer is still one of the leading cancer diagnoses among individuals of both sexes. And the American Cancer Society estimates almost 2,600 people in our state will be diagnosed with the disease this year. But new statistics show younger individuals are experiencing higher rates of diagnoses around the nation. We've been doing a lot of research. A lot of groups are looking at different factors like dietary uh, or physical activity factors. But we have not yet really truly identified factors that influence early onset colorectal cancer. Annie Thibault is the executive director for a colorectal cancer prevention network at USC who says transparency and having a discussion with loved ones about colon cancer history can save lives. A lot of people that have colorectal cancer tend to um, also feel stigma and don't necessarily talk about their diagnosis either. Understanding your family history it plays a huge key in understanding early onset colorectal cancer. However, family history is only one possible determining factor. Some of the things that we are seeing in South Carolina through the Colorectal Cancer Prevention Network is that people who are low income and uninsured tend to have a greater incidence of advanced adenomas. Adenomas are how colon cancer starts. If not found, it can grow and become cancerous. Signs of colon cancer include a change in bowel habits, such as frequent diarrhea or constipation, rectal bleeding or blood in the stool, ongoing discomfort in the belly area, such as cramps, gas, or pain, and a feeling that the bowel doesn't empty all the way during a bowel movement. To help decrease numbers, Thibault urges individuals to get screened and break the stigma of colon cancer talk to family or doctors about the sign or symptoms. And so I think if people know what the signs and symptoms of colorectal cancers are, are, if they understand to talk openly about some of the signs and symptoms they're seeing and talking with their family member. Reporting from Columbia, Casty Byer, News 19 WLTX. A 2022 study found black patients are more likely to get emergency colorectal cancer surgery than any other race. University of Michigan researchers found those patients undergoing emergency surgery experienced a higher rate of complications, including death. Experts found the disparity isn't just tied to genetics. 
when they broke that down further, they also saw similar uh, differences in insurance status uh, and access to care. And their results and their conclusion, they postulated, well, this is probably an access to care issue. And how can we improve that? And this is kind of backed up in older studies that have shown the same thing before. Candace Red has more on what can be done to remove the barriers when it comes to African Americans in this disease. I gotta do everything I can to, to get through this. John Tobias is fighting for his life. Hey, hey sis, how you doing? Not bad, what's going on? He's relying on loved ones like his sister for support. My circle is very strong and very powerful. Uh, so no matter, you know, no matter what happens, hey, I know I had, I had some of the best people around me and that's, that's, that's real hard. John's at Oroville Hospital for treatment. I think I'm gonna beat this and I'm gonna, you know, do what I need to do because that's, you know, I got a little more in my tank. Looking pretty good, though. We've thank lost you, thank quite you. a bit of weight, though. Yeah, I'm, huh? I'm a little man now. He has stage four colon cancer. No use of just beating yourself up going, why did I get cancer? Why did I get this? The American Cancer Society says African Americans are 20% more likely to get colon cancer and 40% more likely to die from it compared to other groups. I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on each day, I hear you families, kids, all this stuff, work, you know, uh, we just need to learn to put that behind us when, when we ain't feeling good, you know, because that might be the first sign. John says he saw the red flags, but didn't go to the doctor immediately. The bottom line was I was just scared. Some of the barriers to health equity include lack of access to information, care, screening, and other socioeconomic factors. Black patients have suffered from systemic racism. There has been redlining in America. And uh, in these communities where patients have lower socioeconomic status, where they they're from poor backgrounds, they do worse with colorectal cancer is very much associated. The incidence is increasing in younger patients. Uh, many of us remember Chadwick Bosman, Black Panther. He died at 43 from metastatic colorectal cancer. So it's very common in the black community. Doctors say the most effective way to reduce your risk of colon cancer is to get screened routinely starting at 45. Don't put it off. It, it could save your life and prolong your life. John's using the power of hope to conquer fear. You gotta believe because believing is at least giving yourself hope. Now, for more information on this disease and what you need to know, we turn to our expert from the Cleveland Clinic. Joining me now is Dr. Carol Burke, a gastroenterologist with Cleveland Clinic. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. This is such a huge topic that we have to talk about. And yes, folks, we are going to talk about poop. I want, I want to get that out there right in the beginning. But first of all, can you explain what is colorectal cancer? Colorectal cancer is a tumor that's malignant that arises within the six foot of the large bowel. So the colon is the upper portion of the large bowel and where stool is contained, um, you know, when it's the right time and you're able to pass your bowel movement or poop out. Um, the lower part that's um, about this long is the rectum. So the large bowel is colon and rectum and cancer can arise from little polyps or growths in any segment of the six foot of the, of the colon and rectum. And if it grows big, it can turn into cancer and then that can go into other parts of the body and be metastatic. So how do you know if you have it? The important thing about colorectal cancer is it's preventative. So people shouldn't wait to develop symptoms that might be suggestive of colorectal cancer. But when small polyps grow big, you could have bleeding that could be microscopic, you can't see it, or overt bright red blood or dark red blood. You could have unanticipated weight loss because the tumor is um, very active and you're not eating well because you feel unwell unexplained low blood count, abdominal pain. So I say for most patients that have seen a doctor because they have some concerning bowel symptoms, 
that if they don't find an answer and the symptoms persist, to be sure you have a colonoscopy to look for changes within the colon that could, and the rectum that could be those little polyps or even cancer. So colonoscopy, we've heard the term, but explain what exactly is that? Colonoscopy is a very common exam. It's considered invasive, but I like to tell patients that it's probably 30 minutes of the best dream you've ever had because we have terrific medications where patients are very comfortable. You know, I've been practicing gastroenterology for 30 years and patients have many barriers for, for having um, or avoiding colorectal cancer screening and particularly with a colonoscopy. Someone will say, my sister's cousin's friend, child had a colonoscopy and had a perforation, they had a hole and needed surgery, or someone had a serious medical event, or the bowel prep is terrible and you can't drink it, or I'm gonna feel pain, or I'm afraid what you're going to find. So there's a variety of different barriers, and I think over the years of practice, we've driven down many of those barriers, so it's painless. It's very safe with complications occurring less than a half percent of the time. It's very quick. I think the hardest thing is the bowel cleansing regimen that people have to go through, but even that barrier has been driven down with nuances in the, the approach to preparation. And I think it's important for people to know it's covered by insurance, no matter what kind of insurance you have. Absolutely, so colorectal cancer screening now, not re looking at symptoms. So colonoscopy is covered for symptoms, but colorectal cancer screening is recommended recommended beginning at the age of 45. It used to be the age of 50. For many years, for at least 20 years, um, the American College of Gastroenterology recommended in African Americans to start at 45 because of the increased risk of cancer and the more advanced stage when detected. But when adjusted for and when we can get uh, blacks in to have their colorectal cancer screening at um, the appropriate age, those disparities in the stage of disease and death from disease are, are mitigated. So we, we really need to offer colorectal cancer screening to all the population who's eligible for it um, and it's covered by insurance. That's really important. And also, who m mainly, is it men or women who are more hesitant to get it or is it pretty much a mix? It was thought that colorectal cancer was a man's disease, but in fact, it's almost equal opportunity for men and women. And if you think about Americans in the United States, about 150,000 individuals would get colorectal cancer. Uh, 10% of them, roughly, of young people under the age of 50 will get colorectal cancer. And those rates are increasing over time, and that's why the guidelines suggest start with colorectal cancer screening at the age of 45. Um, and so equal in gender, um, ethnicities, there is, there's a difference. Um, African Americans, as I said, are at the highest risk, both men and women. Um, the Native Americans also are at high risk. Whites are at lower risk. His, um, Hispanics uh, s slightly along the lines of whites and then Asians less than whites. So there is gender as well as ethnic disparity, but it's an equal opportunity killer. So prevention is where it's really important to have those polyps removed. Is it because of our diet in the US? Absolutely, Monica. So, you know, most of the things that are, that are killing Americans are lifestyle diseases, whether it's cardiovascular disease or cancer. And cancer certainly is an inflammatory state. So if you're a smoker, um, aging increases inflammatory changes in your body. So aging, ethnicity, being overweight. We just did a large study at the Cleveland Clinic looking at early onset colorectal cancer, the cancer that occurs less than the age of 50, and the body mass index, increasing body mass index was associated with that. Um, lack of exercise. Uh, somewhere I read that less than 15% of children in high school or less are getting at least three hours of activity a day. You know, we've, we're, we've turned into a couch potato society. And then I tell my patients, if you wanna prevent cancer, don't eat out of a box, a bag, a can. If, you, if it has color and you can't describe it, the closer you can eat to coming out of the ground is healthier for you. So you don't have to go overboard. You don't have to avoid meat. You know, just a Mediterranean, high plant and fiber-based diet. All of those things have been shown to decrease cancer rates in some other countries by up to 30%, including colorectal cancer. But we've seen studies about processed meats and red meat. Is that a bigger problem? Um, especially cooking meats at high temperatures, it changes you know, the chemical composition with nitrosamine. So as I said, 
People need to live their life. And if you want to have a hamburger occasionally, but three to six ounces of red meat, but that can't be the basis of your diet. The, the really the, the pyramid of food should be that type of food. You know, meats, red meats should be a limited amount. And at the bottom, it's fruits, vegetables, fibers, and grains. So w another thing that a lot of people hate about colonoscopy or they're afraid of because of, of colonoscopy is the prep. Explain the prep, what is it, and what are the options these days? Uh, great, that's such an important question. The colon, as I said, is six feet long. It's a tube, and it takes about three days for the food to get uh, uh, all the way around your colon and then exit into your toilet. Um, and so when you have a colonoscopy, you can envision if the colon is full of bowel movement that we can't really see anything, and the next most important thing to choosing a high quality doctor to do your colonoscopy is to be sure that your prep is really good. So you have to clean the stool out of your colon. And that means a few days before the exam, you cut out those healthy foods that I told you about, fibrous residue. Because if you have a piece of corn or a bunch of lettuce or seeds, our scope can't suck those out. It'll clog the scope and it makes it hard to see. So we want really a clean colon. The intestinal tract starts in your mouth. So I tell patients when you open your mouth and you see the inside, that glistening mucus laden covering, that should be what your, that's what your colon looks like. So you have to move the stool out of that so we can see the lining very well. And um, that process starts, it's usually clear liquids the day before colonoscopy, as many clear liquids as you want. Some people ask me if vodka is a clear liquid and I say, no, that wouldn't be the best clear liquid to avoid that, but clear liquids. You said you used Italian ice, you know, lemon ice, popsicles, tea, sports drinks, anything that you can see through, even black coffee, it just can't have milk products in it. But as time is going on, we're realizing that there will be a time where we actually let people have um, a low residue diet. So white bread, an egg, uh, maybe some rice um, in limited quantities the day before the exam, because people feel a little better, it's a challenge not to be able to eat the day before the exam because you're seeing all the ads for hamburgers and hot dogs and candy. Um, so we'll get to that point. But So you need to adjust the diet and then you need to take a laxative, either a prescription laxative or an over-the-counter preparation. So we have props. We do have props. Because I, you know, I've had three colonoscopies and each prep was a little different. Um, but I'd never had to do this one. This is the one that actually scared me. I'm like, I don't know if I could drink all of that the day before. Yes, this is a gallon and it is um, polyethylene glycol. It is safe for everybody, usually very cheap if you have to pay for it, covered by insurance. And you need to drink all preparations in two doses. You start the night before about six o'clock and then four hours before your procedure the next day, you get all of that small intestinal bile, the yellow secretions out so we can see the lining very carefully. So the gallon is split in half, but it's basically eight ounces every 10 minutes. And it can be a challenge, yeah. especially if someone's had bariatric surgery or slow stomach emptying. So this was the safe for everybody. And that had been a barrier because people just couldn't imagine drinking it or, you know, or felt unwell, but we can get people through this and there are ways to decrease nausea. Um, and then uh, what we've come to is lower volume preparation. So two bottles of flavored solution. So two bottles of this, and it's not just the laxative that's mixed with water that needs to be ingested, but it's all the additional fluid. So the more you can drink in addition to the two bottles of this, or now we even have this other one that's um, you know less than a, a can of soda. So two of these, cranberry flavored. So the volume is being driven down, the flavor has gotten better, and then lots of clear liquids. Um, and dividing these um, things into two different doses often is more palatable. So these are very effective medications. And a good warning if you're, when you start those, don't leave the house. Stay near the throne. Yeah, stay yeah. near the bathroom. For people who, you know, maybe for whatever medical reason or maybe they're too young um, to get a colonoscopy initially, are there other options? Right. Uh, only 70% of eligible Americans have had colorectal cancer screening, which is heartbreaking because if you have not had colorectal cancer screening and you develop you know, cancer, um, if it's not detected early, it can be advanced and needs 
additional therapy to, to surgery. So um, it is prudent that doctors actually talk to patients about the options. Colonoscopy is one. I like it because it's one-stop shopping. You can look in the colon. If there's polyps, you can remove them. Even early cancers can be removed through the scope. So it's, it's detection and prevention because if you remove the polyps, then you can prevent, decrease the risk of cancer. But some people don't opt for that. And there's been shown to be ethnic diversity in who chooses what. Colonoscopy requires, um, for most people, they, they get sedation. So it requires a day off of work, a driver that comes with you. So there are some barriers, um, but it's you know pain-free um, and can be accomplished in one day with those preventative benefits that I mentioned. Then there's the old um, stool blood test. This is called a fecal immunochemical test. It's specific for human blood in the stool. And basically in a small kit, you get something that goes under your toilet seat that catches the, the bowel movement. And you take this little spear out, stick it in the stool, pop it back in this little flat test tube, and you send it back to your doctor's office. And this is very effective and very accurate for colon cancer detection. Colon cancer detection. As I mentioned, colon cancer starts like as polyps in the colon and the rectum. So not very good at picking up polyps. There's another stool test. It's the dancing box that you might see on TV. That test uses a fecal immunochemical test. So it's looking for stool, blood, um, and blood can arise from cancers and from some polyps. And that test, um, the dancing box, also includes genetic markers because we know that when you develop colon polyps and cancer, that there's changes in the genetic material, the DNA that's shed into the stool. So that takes advantage of the fit as well as the genetic markers um, that would be shed from polyps and cancer. Again, very good at detecting cancer. The detection of polyps is about 50% with that dancing box test. Is there, are there other things? Short scopes that we don't really do anymore, the sigmoidoscopies, but those could be coupled um, with a fecal immunochemical test. What um, about virtual? There also is that virtual colonoscopy. So that is using the CAT scan where um, you know, 30 seconds on your belly, a few seconds on your back, also needs generally needs a prep. It is not preferred um, because insurance companies don't always pay for that, but it does get paid for if individuals for some reason cannot have a colonoscopy. And it is very good at detecting large polyps, medium polyps, and cancer. But again, not always covered by insurance unless there's a good reason. Someone could not have a colonoscopy if needed. Are there other reasons that you could have blood in your stool? Absolutely, and, and a word of caution here. Now that early onset colorectal cancer is on the rise, I have had many um, physicians throughout the country and patients say, I've been to the doctor, I had bright red blood um, coming out of my rectum and they said, it's hemorrhoids. Now hemorrhoids are a common cause of rectal bleeding. Um, it's painless bleeding, right? It's bright red blood, it can be dripping out of the toilet, you find it on the tissue when you wipe but it could also be a sign of early onset colorectal cancer. It doesn't have to be early onset colorectal cancer. And what's, what's really interesting about this phenomenon in young people is it's left-sided and rectal. So most cancers in people over the age of 50, um, and about 5% of us will get colorectal cancer, it's, it's on the right side of the colon. But young people, and it's particularly white young people where this is really increasing quickly, it's rectum and left side. Um, so that could be bright red blood. Um, oftentimes for right-sided colon cancer, it, um, the, you know, it could be mixed in with stool so you don't see anything. But hemorrhoids would be a common cause. Painless, bright red blood, usually with defecation. Um, another cause is fissures. So people will say, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, my anus is so painful and, and when I wipe, I see red blood. That's a fissure. It's like a paper cut or a little crack in the anus. Diverticulosis is a common disease in elderly individuals. Those are pockets in the colon that can cause inflammation or infection. They can be a cause of bleeding, bright red blood. It's just usually painless. It just, they just open and bleed. So I would say for anyone that's experiencing bright, bright red blood, that, they, that your doctor, um, that you haven't talked to your doctor about, go see your doctor. And if they don't see blood coming from a hemorrhoid, they don't know where it's coming from, then I would suggest that a colonoscopy is the best approach to be sure that it is something that's, that's not serious or life-threatening. Are you finding though that a lot of physicians are dismissing younger patients with that 
excuse that, oh, it's just a hemorrhoid, oh, you're, it's just a whatever. Yeah, you're too young to have something like that. Yeah. Many physicians, I think, are, are with the increased awareness of this, not only patient awareness, but physician awareness, they're becoming more um, concerned about it. And, and I find that less young people are being dismissed. You know, as we talked about them before, the, the important point is if you have a symptom that you're concerned about, please share that information. Share that with a family member who might encourage you to go to the doctor. But if you're not satisfied, right, if they haven't found a reason for you to have rectal bleeding, don't be dismissed. Make sure that you're an advocate for yourself and then, you know, see another healthcare provider. And a gastroenterologist would be a perfect provider to see, to talk about your symptoms and, and what options are available. Is it, you know, does the, does the bleeding just continue? Is there a time period? Like if it doesn't stop within a week or, or two weeks or something, then you really need to see someone else? Um, no, no. I, I've had personal experience with family members that said, oh, I had COVID, so I had bright red blood and it went away. And then they were diagnosed with metastatic colon cancer. So certainly some of the characteristics about the pace of bleeding, the amount of bleeding, the color of the blood that you see, your blood count if it's tested, those all go into making a decision. So it's really important to not dismiss it yourself. Don't let a doctor dismiss you if they haven't found the reason for it. So you can't really base it on duration or type. I just, I, I would say get an evaluation by a professional and don't don't try to diagnose it yourself. Based final, on final thoughts. What do you want people to take away from this? Colon cancer is preventable. Please have screening. Talk to your doctor about it. There's many methods to have colorectal cancer screening. If you have colorectal cancer screening that's not, col that's not colonoscopy and it, it, it is abnormal, you need to have a colonoscopy. Colonoscopy can be done safely. It can remove polyps. It can prevent cancer. It can also detect early cancer, some which can be removed through the scope. And if early cancer is detected, it's usually, if it needs surgery, it's curable. Talk to your family about heredity because colon cancer can run in families and individuals with a family history might need earlier colorectal cancer screening than beginning at the age of 45 to 49. And as a young person, don't dismiss the conversation, don't dismiss any symptoms that could be concerning for a colon disease, including colorectal cancer. See your doctor. Especially if you're African American Af or, or- Or a young person, even young a white person. young people, yes. All right, great yeah. advice, great insight. Thank, Thank you, Dr. You. Burke. My pleasure. Dr. Burke walked us through a colonoscopy and some of the prep, and it's certainly not glamorous, but it is important. Abby Ham from our Knoxville TV station went through a colonoscopy and takes us through the step-by-step -step screening process. I am 43 years old. My grandmother had colon cancer twice, and I had an odd test result at my doctor's office during my yearly physical. Both reasons, I decided to get a colonoscopy younger than the recommended age of 45, with the help of Dr. Tejal Mystery at Gastrointestinal Associates. You're not gonna feel a thing. If you have a family history or other, you know, inflammatory bowel disease or, you know, other causes that may have you to even be screened earlier, you can discuss that with your uh, physician and you may get screened earlier than 45. These are the main rare complications. But it's even earlier if your family history involves your mom or dad. Guidelines say that first degree relatives, you start at 40 or 10 years earlier from when your first degree relative was diagnosed, whichever one comes first. Colorectal cancer is the second most common cause of cancer deaths in the U.S., according to the American Cancer Society. Numbers show this year alone, more than 153,000 people will be diagnosed with colon cancer, and a third of those people won't make it. That's why screenings are so important. I want my mommy. We have all probably heard about the prep. Let's be honest, the whole process is less than glamorous. You start a liquid diet the day before and then drink a ton of water and take a lot of pills the night before. One of these every two minutes with water and there's 12 of them. This is part of the prep. Then the morning of more pills, more water, down the hatch. Then the process begins. Check in. We'll get you some warm blankets. Change clothes. This is your colon. Chat with your doctor. I need sleep. Then some good meds. We're all here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And the main event, the colonoscopy. The mucosa flying. It's kind of shiny. Seems super easy, right? 
It actually was. I'll come see you in two seconds. My end result was a best case scenario. So no, nothing weird. Nothing weird at all. But had it not been, I would have detected any issues early. You did great, we're all finished. Which is ideal. Most cancer screenings are you're getting screened to see, oh, do I have the cancer or not? Yes, that's what a colonoscopy is for, but a huge reason is prevention. We take out the precancerous polyps, we take out polyps, and kind of you follow up in three to five to seven years. That'll do it for this week's edition of Prescription for Life. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back here with another dose next week. Until then, I'm Monica Robbins wishing you and yours good health. Thank you so much for tuning into Health Yeah. Please find me on Twitter and Instagram at Monica Robbins. Like and follow my Facebook page, Monica Robbins WKYC. Find video podcasts at Monica Robbins channel on YouTube. And please subscribe. Wishing you great health and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for listening to Health Yeah! with Monica Robbins from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now so you never miss an update. And find more on everything you heard here on WKYC.com and on the WKYC app.